We're now on page 94, and this is ECD exercise number 19, and uh, this is a very interesting rhythm. Um, let's start with the heart rate here. We have a heart rate of approximately 40, and if we map it out, here's one that falls just on to the left of a dark line. The heart rate here is 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 43, and 37. So between 43 and 37, keeping in mind that this one's on the other side of the dark line, so that's about 40. I think that's fair. Uh, we definitely have P waves. They're present, and they're upright, and they seem to be pretty consistent in morphology. Uh, but the peer interval is not really applicable. There is no consistent peer interval. See, it's not, not consistent here. That's not the same as this. It's different from that one and so on and so forth. So there's no real PR interval here. And uh, the QRS is narrow. It's uh, less than 0.12 second. And the ratio is not applicable because there is no PR interval. Uh, and the rhythm is regular, uh, which tells us, uh, suggests that these uh, QRS complexes are coming from the same focus, right? But this is odd because th there are P waves present, but there's no consistent PR interval. So the P waves don't appear to be connected in any way to the QRS complexes. And in fact, if we were to map them out, uh, we would see that they're equidistant. And uh, there's a key finding here. At some points, um, you know, namely here and here and here, they alter the QRS and or T wave morphology. In other words, the P waves are marching through they are not connected or associated in any way, shape, or form with the QRS complexes. So we have atrioventricular dissociation. And that means that the interpretation is third degree AV block with a heart rate of 40. Now, this is a little unusual because usually when you have a third degree AV block, you have a wide QRS. But this is one of those cases, and this, this is actually in an adult patient that I had uh, a few years ago. Uh, but more commonly, you see narrow QRS complex third degree AV blocks in kids who, who are born with cardiac anomalies. But what's happening here is that uh, we have uh, the sinus node, which is firing as it normally would. Uh, but none of the sinus beats are getting through uh, because there's some sort of AV block, right? There's a block there of some sort. So those these P waves are not getting through uh, the AV node down to the ventricles. Uh, but what's happening, in order for that QRS to be narrow, the only way the QRS can be narrow, if you recall, is if the impulse travels down both bundle branches simultaneously. Therefore, the focus uh, giving rise to these narrow QRS complexes has to be coming from above the bifurcation of the bundle branches. Therefore, the focus must be somewhere in the bundle of Hiss, somewhere around here, um, so that it's traveling down both bundle branches simultaneously. That's how we end up with a narrow complex third degree AV block. And the heart rate in the third degree AV block is, is uh, well, it's a little slightly on the high side uh, because the range is typically 20 to 40. Uh, but uh, that higher heart rate is fairly consistent with, with a focus that's up higher. And sometimes you'll see, uh, when you do see narrow QRS complex third degree V blocks, the heart rate may even be higher, you know, 60 or so, because the focus is coming from so high here around the bundle of his or the, you know, the perinatal tissue, but somewhere below the AB node. So this is an interesting case of a, a third degree AV block with a narrow QRS complex.